transition in today's debate, we would first like to clarify that we have no problem with young people being in loving relationships if they don't at all feel pressured. We just in general, however, support the choice of young people to be single as it has significant benefits personally, societally, and is principally justified. So let me tell you what I as first speaker in today's debate will be doing. I will be explaining how it is principally better for young people to not have the pressure to be in relationships and how this actually reduces outdated societal norms before my second speaker will, and then I will also explain the benefits of this to society and my second speaker will then go on to discuss how this has significant individual benefits. So the principle of today's debate is that by um, encouraging young people to remain single and by supporting their decision to do so, we break down outdated historical norms and get rid of the pressure that young, feel, young people throughout history have felt to be in relationships. So, all throughout history, women have been suppressed and told that they are inferior to men. Women are taught that their role is to take care of their husband and their children. Let me provide an example. So, in uh, previous centuries, women were not actually allowed to inherit property or inherit possessions from their family. In fact, they had to be married and their husband had to be the one to actually inherit these things. So it is very evident, it's an indisputable fact that throughout history, women have been suppressed. So why is this relevant in today's debate? This perception of women being inferior has led to the development of norms that essentially stand to say women need a man to be something. So this norm has been perpetuated for generations. We see that in the 1950s, it was very popular for women to be housewives, and they had to fit into this picture-perfect narrative of what a family looks like in order to be seen as good enough. We also see that this was harmful to men, as men were told that in order to be seen as a good husband, you need to have children and you need to fit into this picture-perfect family. Yes? If stereotypes exist, how exactly does not being in a relationship change any thank of the you, problems thank you discussed? We're actually going to get to that but um, in my speech, but by these stereotypes, by not having the pressure to any longer be in a relationship, and by young people taking an active stance against these stereotypes, we see them being diminished. So, why is it a problem that there's these societal norms, which is addressing your POI? So these societal norms have led to the development of societal pressure. Women are told they are nothing without men. As such, they feel that they need to be in a relationship to be with a man in order to feel worthy. So, they also men feel this pressure to be part of a picture of perfect family. So we see that in general, there's a wide, uh, a strong amount of societal pressure for all people, even young people, to be in a relationship to feel good enough and to feel validated in themselves. So what is the impact of this? We see for decades that people have been rushing into relationships at a very young age. We see that now divorce rates for older couples are at an all-time high because these people <coughs> felt such <coughs> immense pressure to rush into relationships they likely were not ready for and with people they likely did not match up with. They felt the pressure to do so and as such the result is that now we see that most relationships with the older generation are actually unsuccessful. So, um, now we see that people no longer feel pressured to be in these relationships. We see this as true because people, young people, are now taking an active stance against these societal norms and against this pressure and these generational norms to actually be single. So we, no thank you. We see, this shows that as a society, we are finally starting to reject these very outdated and straight up sexist norms that put immense pressure on both men and women to rush into relationships they aren't ready for or otherwise wouldn't rush into. So why is this good? So it's good on our side of the world that women no longer feel the need to be with a man in order to be validated. We see it as a good thing that women feel capable of going out into the workforce and having a career and not feeling the need to stay in the home and take care of children in order to be good enough as a woman. And additionally, we see that in order to evolve as a society, these norms too must shift. 
we see that we as young people, by taking an active stance against these norms and choosing to be single, we see that we are pushing our society forward in a very positive direction. Quite nothing for me. So as such, it is morally justified why young people are choosing to take this stance and are choosing to stay single as it breaks down these outdated norms and it reduces this pressure so people now have an active choice. <coughs> Second argument, this is significantly better for society when young people don't feel the need to be in a relationship at such a young age. So when people no longer feel this pressure and these norms no longer exist, people choose to not be in relationships. As such, they spend their time and their money elsewhere. So, relationships cost a lot of money. I think we can all agree on this. You go on a date, it's very expensive. You order a nice steak, that costs a lot of money. So, you um, also, it costs time to go on a date. It costs time to stay up all night texting your boyfriend when you could be doing schoolwork, when you could be doing other work. So, there are a lot of things that are lost. The opportunity cost of being in a relationship is very, very high. So, when we see people actively choosing to not be in a relationship, they are now able to spend this time and this money that they otherwise would have dedicated to their relationship elsewhere. We see this as very beneficial. Why is that? We see that now people are actually, all people, we're seeing much higher rates of college and further education. Because people no longer feel, well, you know, after high school, I'm just going to settle down and get straight into marriage and just pop out a couple kids and then I've accomplished my goal. People actually are getting further education. People are pursuing their careers and we see that this stimulates the economy significantly. Furthermore, people also find new hobbies and are able to be personally stimulated, which my second speaker will, will further elaborate. Also, people can travel the world, people can experience cultures, they can grow their worldview. We see this as very beneficial, not only uh, for society, as now people are more educated about different cultures and are more educated about different things and are as such more open-minded to change, which only furthers the cycle of society progressing again in the future. So, what are the economic impacts of this? So we see that there is further economic stimulation when people are working more and prioritizing their career. When I no longer feel the need to right after high school settle down and have children, I'm going to go to university. I'm going to